Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you, the YouTube audience, the training that you need to tackle jobs like this one on your own. Today's job is going to be opening up a wall in order to dry it out to prevent mold growth from growing inside the wall. Let me tell you what happened. So what happened was, is we're standing on the first level of my home. On the second level upstairs, I rebuilt the bathroom about three years ago. And you can check out my channel to see that complete bathroom remodel. And what happened was, is uh, this valve right here, which is the cold water valve underneath the sink on the left hand side, uh, what, what, what the... Uh, what it did was is it cracked on the inside and the valve body and it was spraying out water no one's living on the second level right now we're living on the first level we saw water on the floor we thought that we had a slab leak and i don't have the tools to diagnose slab leaks i thought i was gonna have to call a plumber in order to get a plumber in here to figure out where exactly the um pipe had had a problem so we were I was kind of monitoring it and trying to figure that out I looked at my water meter to look at the little red dial to see if it was turning and it was not turning indicating like slow to no leak and and so I was kind of watching it and then finally I opened up there's a closet right over here let me show you just off the front door is this closet I opened up the closet because I wanted to get something out of it and then I looked up and the ceiling you camera might be picking this up you can see how it's discolored well I saw little rain like little droplets all coming on the ceiling there so it was all wet so at that point in time I went up the stairs to the second level let me show you what I found so we're on the second level here's the hallway I actually thought that it was the condensate drain line which is this PVC line right here coming from the from the air conditioning unit but it turns out that that was not it. Right next door is the bathroom. Here's the bathroom where I did the remodel. And I basically took, took this uh, down to the studs. I removed a pony wall and I um, put the, the shower in. I left the tub, but I put in the new enclosure, the niches and on that, that trim work. I put in the new vanity here. Here's your two sinks. Now here on the left hand side, on the underneath, this valve right there, which is this valve in my hand, had cracked and it was spraying water out everywhere. So this whole cavity was filled up. And you can see the way that they, they did this vanity, they put a drawer underneath. I opened up the drawer, it was all filled with water and, and it was overflowing. This is the drawer, I had to build a new drawer. This is what the original drawers look like. This here is particle wood on the original drawer. Well, on the drawer that got all wet, the particle wood swelled up so much that it would not go back in. So I had to build this drawer. If you want to see how I built that, you can check out my channel. I'll try to leave a link for it in the description. And so I had to rebuild that drawer. I had to build the new drawers to put it in. The face is the only part that uh, I was able to salvage. So now, let me show you what's happening on the first level. This is where the water was ponding where we actually saw it. So what happened was, is the water came, the ba that bathroom is like over here. So it came down and came into the closet here, came across, came down to here, came down this wall here, and then came out to the floor this way. Now you can just kind of barely notice this, but Notice that, that the um, baseboard has separated away from the wall, so, so that's swelled out there. I'm going to take this off in a few moments, but let me tell you what's leading me to this whole thing. Here we have a moisture meter, and you can see that it's the uh, general MM8 is the model number. So we turn this moisture meter on, and it's got different modes. Right now it's on the, uh, the mode for wall, but you can go masonry soft wood, hard wood, and then back to wall. Well, we want, so I've been monitoring this leak here. So when you take this, which is a non-invasive moisture meter, there's no pins. And the way that this technology works is that when you put it against uh, the subject that you're trying to figure out, it's actually measuring 
from from the from the face of this face right here to like three quarters of an inch in the drywall is of a half half of an inch so I can actually measure if the back side of this drywall is wet with this moist this this meter now you see right here we're you know way too hot when we were when I was originally checking this it was at a hundred percent now we're at ninety four percent come over here so it's a little bit better at fifty percent but it's been I actually waited too long. I should have done this right after the water leak, but it's actually been almost two weeks and we're still wet. And what's happening is, is I believe we're growing mold inside this wall. So I'm, I, I want to get this wall dry and I want to get it dry immediately. So we're going to monitor and see how long it takes for us to get this, just like this wall. When you take this and put it against it, you notice that uh, it's uh, very, it's a very low moisture content. It's like no moisture content because the wall is dry. Come over here to this wall over here. Same thing. This wall over here, the one that we're dealing with, you know, we we have moisture inside of this wall. So uh, over here on this side, nothing, nothing. So we know that this wall here is affected. With this is a bathroom. This is the other side of the closet. I have moisture inside of there too. Yikes. All of this is wet. And over here, we're dry. So we're wet on this section over here. And I'm trying to prevent me from doing a bunch of patch and paint on the visible side here. The way, what I need to do is I need to get this, these, these closet walls opened up. So I'm gonna have to, first of all, I gotta get, I gotta open, I gotta take all the stuff out of the closet get this and then I'm gonna open a couple uh, um, some make some holes in the wall so I can get some airflow going in so I'll do two holes one on this wall one on this wall over here and then also up at the ceiling level I'm gonna open up the ceiling level to get a place for the airflow to come out of so uh, I'm gonna do all this right now let me get myself set up we got our support team over here helping us out that's Tigo all right, so I made up a temporary table here as a staging area to take out all the products out of the uh, closet. So with the closet opened up, this is what we got going on. Uh, where the blue tape is is where my studs are located. So I know that I've got a stud as an example going across that way, and and there's a stud going this way. I shouldn't call that one a stud. I guess I've got I've got some wood back there because I've got screw holes. Now. Uh, down here on this section of the closet, uh, I got my moisture meter, and let me show you what the moisture contents are. So we got it on. Over here is 100%. There's a stud right here where that blue tape is. On this side of the stud is 100%. And then this is a stud right here. On this side of the stud is 100%. And on that side is the stud is 100%. So we know that this back wall is showing moisture. So what I've done is I've taken a, uh, a level here, a 24 inch level, and I've penciled off exactly uh, a square of 24 inches. I'm gonna use my drywall saw here and I'm gonna cut the hole, the access hole. I'm making it a really big access hole so I got plenty of room to see exactly what's going on. I'm not making a little tiny hole. Now, because of my, the way that I find studs is with this tool right here, the uh, Magic Stud Finder. It's a great tool. So you use these things called torpedoes, and you put the torpedoes in here like this. And you, uh, I've already got it penciled out, but I know that there's, there's screws or nails right there. I'll show you how you figure this out. You take this, and it, the torpedo sticks right towards it. And then I just took my pencil and put a pencil mark there, and then I used this uh, utility knife here in order to uh, cut it out and then uh, what I did was I just used a pair of uh, needle nose, excuse me, uh, uh, the diagonal side cutters in order to uh, massage out that nail so I can take out the nail. So I know that there's, there was three nails that are holding in this one piece so I'll just uh, use that same method with the other two uh, nails, grab, pull those out cut out the square and then we'll be able to look inside the wall.
Okay, so this is what the back of the panel looks like, and right there is where you can begin to see what is the beginning stages, or that is mold growth right there, for sure. So well, that's absolutely some form of mold, and uh, it's not at a, huge, a terrible state at this point in time, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, using the moisture meter now from this side, this would be interesting. Okay, it's showing 100% from this side. Eh, it doesn't matter. It's getting. It's showing that it's filled with moisture. By the way, when I was using the uh, the drywall saw, this uh, tool, uh, I could tell that the the drywall was cutting like moist drywall. It wasn't cutting like dry drywall. Um, all right, let's see what the uh, inside of the cavity will looks like. I am going to have to, I was hoping to put this piece back uh, after I get it cleaned up. So if I put it back, I'm just going to mark it that that's the top because it's a 24 by 24 inch piece. So I just want to label it in case I actually don't use new drywall and end up just using this existing drywall. I'm not sure what direction I'm going to go in yet. Once this dries out and I clear this uh, that mold out, I clean that out with a bleach water solution or some form of that, then... Um, uh, I could actually just use a, a croncubine uh, or cryobian or something like that. I think it is a mold killer. So some type of a mold killer. All right, we've gone to the store. We've got some concrobium uh, mold control that we are uh, in an aerosol format. So we can start spraying uh, inside of our wall cavities. So we can uh, kill all the mold spores that are inside the wall cavities. So we're going to spray it from the uh, top down and also from the bottom up. So I've got, as you can see, all three sides of the closet on the bottom opened up and all three sides of, of the closet on the top opened up as well. So we're gonna spray from all directions uh, to, in an effort to kill whatever mold spores are inside of the wall, especially the obvious stuff, which is this one right here. And also over here, we have obvious uh, mold uh, growth going on right there as well. For personal protective equipment, I will put on some, my respirator, some safety glasses, and some gloves. All right, I went and sprayed every cavity as well as I could, and I tried to spray it in all directions, like three, 360 degrees, uh, to try to get full coverage inside of the wall cavities. I used up almost at least two-thirds, if not 75% of, uh, of this can. So there's only like 25% left. So with the remainder of this, I want to get the stuff outside. All right, these are the pieces I got outside drying. I got this one, this one, there's two right there, there's one over here, and then there's one just up on the, uh, the hillside right over there. And it looks like out of all of them, this one here is the worst one, and you can see some mold growth right there. So it's, it's not bad, but I am just going to spray this down and just get the entire back of the panel just to protect it. So what I'm gonna do, is um, use the rest of the product on the rest of the panels. I can see some some mold growth here. Just go ahead and spray that. And I'm just going to let this dry out in the sun to kill this a uh, hundred percent. Here you can see some mold growth on the back of that. And we'll just go ahead and kill that. And just go ahead and kill everything on the back of these panels that I took out. All right now that I've uh, completely uh, got in the uh, concrobium mold control aerosol all over the inside wall cavities there. Uh, I'm just going to clean up my drywall dust now and then I'm just going to get a fan in here and I am going to start um, drying out these wall cavities and letting the concrobium that's inside there just uh, well, as this dries it also kills the uh, mold spores so uh, this will be a complete kill by the time it gets dry. Spraying the uh, concrobium uh, mold control uh, inside of the uh, closet on the inside the walls was an easy process. There's no smell. It's colorless. It's odorless. 
totally recommend it over bleach any day. Uh, the product did not go as far as I thought it was going to go. I thought I'd have no problem spraying the inside of this, these, these cavities plus the outside pieces and I ran short of just one piece of drywall but that did not have any mold on it anyways but this also is like a protective barrier to prevent future mold growth so I was going to spray it down anyways but the can is completely empty. So if you do plan on using the aerosol it does not go as far as you think it's going to go. I wanted to get the aerosol as opposed to the pump spray because with the pump spray I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to spray inside the the wall cavities as good. Uh, and maybe it would have been good to purchase both products and, and that way I would have both products on hand. They're like ten dollars each. But um, uh, that would be the one thing that uh, maybe I'd want to do. But I, I think I'm totally covered with the amount of product that I had for the square footage that I had which is very small square footage really. So not much. Uh, but I definitely definitely recommend it. Okay now that I've got the uh, floor cleaned up a little bit and everything is sprayed down with the mold killer concrobium. I've got the fan blowing and circulating inside the three wall cavities to promote the air to flow up and then out the uh, top vents here to try to get that air circulating and, and dry that out. Um, I'm going to monitor this with my moisture meter and then once everything is dry then I can start putting things back together. But for now, that's as far as I can take this project to allow this to dry out. All right, the sun has been on these panels for a few hours and the sun's going down. So I'm going to just take, and these panels are, by the way, pretty, very dry. So I'm gonna take some uh, simple green here and some paper towels, and I'm simply gonna just spray them down and wipe them down just to get the uh, molds <clears throat> that I can see like right there is a perfect example right there I can see like some mold growth I'm gonna try to get that off well let's see how well we do all right we'll let that dry out for a few minutes and I'll, we'll see what that looks like in the meantime I'm just gonna do the same thing I did to this panel to all the rest of these panels here just to get them clean well, I'm kind of losing the sunlight, but these this was the one of the worst ones, and it just looks perfectly fine. So using the uh, the simple green just really took care of all those mold stains that were on the back. The mold was already killed from the concrobian uh, mold killer that I had sprayed on there. I just wanted to kind of remove the uh, stain that was kind of left behind. Okay, so I've had the fan going overnight. And we've got the moisture meter here. And if you remember, this wall right here was showing um, some pretty good moisture yesterday. I'm all over this wall today. And it is completely dry just from the wall being opened up overnight. I'm not getting one reading here now. All right, so, so this side of the wall is good. So let's come over to this side. So we still have some moisture going on on this side of the wall uh, uh, on the inside right here. We'll check it on the other side and we'll see what it's uh, reading over there. But that's, this is pretty impressive for, for just overnight with the fan that it's drying out. I do want to um, just use my simple green that I got right here and get a brush and just uh, um, put a little bit of that simple green on the mold that I can see which is just around this section here and also around this section over here so I'm going to do that right now. Okay, here we are on the back side of that wall this is where I was getting those high numbers before uh, inside the closet so we're just on the other side of the closet wall here actually I'm not getting any numbers at all let's just keep double checking this Okay, wait a minute, we have a number coming up here. As we come up, okay, we're getting some moisture just up here at the top. Uh, let me show you where that is in the closet. All right, so we're inside the closet. Let's see what the numbers are up here. All right, still getting high numbers up here too. So we gotta let this definitely dry out a little bit more. But in the meantime, since we're gonna let it dry out for another day, I'm just gonna get that mold right now with the uh, simple green. 
All right, so because the mold is already dead because I used that uh, concrobium, I'm just going to spray it down with a simple green and just use this brush here just to uh, just to kind of get that stain out. It's it's the the, the mold is already dead, but I'm just kind of wanting to not even have that. Uh, that on the surface so I just want to get this kind of cleaned out so I'm just going to spray that down because I'm going to still put the fan on here overnight again because the uh, top of that closet is a little wet so this is all I'm going to do oh and, and then so I'm just going to get this section here and get this section right there and then over here pretty much the same thing let me just so I can see a little bit better. Uh, there's some type of a patch job somebody did there. All right, so same thing. Kind of saw that there, and then just use the brush just to just to kind of get out anything that looks kind of weird. In this section here. So that's all. Just trying to keep it clean. This is the weirdest patch job I've ever seen. Whoever did this one, <laughs> I couldn't see it on the other side, but you can see it here. Uh, that's pretty much it, though. All right. So pretty much this is it. I cleaned everything up a little bit. I even cleaned up the dust inside of the uh, bottom of the uh, channels inside the uh, walls. Oh, and I also prepped my drywall to get it uh, to get ready for patch and paint. So I uh, scored my edges here with a utility knife to smooth out those those uh, edges there. So when the drywall goes in, it goes in a little bit smooth. All I have to do now is put the fan back in, and then we'll watch the uh, moisture content to make sure that it drops down to the uh, correct levels. But uh, to to a zero state. All right, here's a shot of the fan. We're just gonna let this sit here for the day and let this dry out with the fan running. All right, it's been about 24 hours since I opened up the wall cavity and see the meter here. You'll see that pretty much we're zeros across the board. No beeping, no nothing going anywhere here. This wall over here, nothing. Now we were getting some activity up here, and oh, wait a minute. where the stud is at, we're picking up a little bit. So where the studs, there's some moisture there, but all the drywall is pretty much dry. But over here on the wall that has insulation, see that? So we still have moisture here and it's because of that insulation that's preventing that air from circulating like unlike this here where I've got you know uh, airflow going right from the bottom up to the top on the both the uh, left uh, the right hand side in the center but here on the left wall because this is an exterior wall it has insulation <clears throat> you know what I'll do actually is I'll remove as much insulation as easy to get at put the fan directly underneath, blow it up, and then try my best to get it dry that way. All right, so I opened up that wall cavity down there as much as I could. This side is dry, so I don't see the reason to uh, pull this one out over here. Now, coming up here, what I did was, is I, uh, I pulled out this section here. We still have moisture content here. Coming across here, and over here, there's no moisture there, but I'm getting a little bit up there. You have a reading, so what I'm gonna so I opened up, so I pulled this section out, the insulation out of here. I pulled it up out of here, but it was I couldn't, I didn't want to pull the entire cavity because I still have a whole bunch of drywall in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the fan up right now on top of the safe, facing that way. Let that sit overnight. See if that'll dry that section out. Okay, so here's the setup with the fan just facing this way. We'll let that sit overnight and we'll test it again tomorrow and we'll see what we get for these levels. These are all the dry drywall panels that I can put back 
when I'm ready to, to get to this stage of the project. This is the insulation that I took out of the wall cavity that I showed you. It's getting uh, uh, dark now, so I'm just going to leave this in the garage overnight. Tomorrow I'll put it out in the sun in the morning, let it sit in the sun all day, and by the end of the day I'm sure this will all be bone dry. So here I've got some all-purpose joint compound for the patch and paint. Some drywall taping knives and uh, and uh, tools here in order to, to get to that stage of the project. And some uh, water and a sponge. It's the following morning. We've had the fan going here all night long. We do not have moisture. Oh, wait a minute. We do have some moisture up here. So we still have moisture there. And it's actually all the way even down to here. Over here it's dry, and underneath right here it's dry. So it's basically just from here up. So right there is 100%. So nothing I can do but just... Well, I could try to reach down there more and, and try to grab out that insulation. So that's one thing I could do. I was trying to not rip out the insulation. But I could try to do that, or what I could do is I could just keep doing this method and with it open on the bottom uh, the bottom here and open on the top here hopefully that it will dry out on its own but well, let's give it some more time all right so it's the following morning the fan's been running all night long I just shut it off so we got the machine on here and you'll see here yeah. and I've already checked this off camera oh, hold on shut off. I've already checked this off camera but we are 100% dry so this strategy worked really well. So at this point in time all I really need to do is, uh, is uh, button up the drywall. Um, but here's the catch. I've always wanted an electrical outlet on this wall right there and now that I got all the walls opened up here I can see a power cord coming to this transformer so my plan is to intercept that line at this box here so I'm going to cut this drywall out here so I have better access here and um, then at that point in time I gotta cut this way to make the bend uh, around here and I'll probably have to open this drywall up more here. So I come around here, uh, come come over to here, and then come into here. We got our support staff here helping us. There's one, and there's the other one. Okay. All right. Now that all of our panels are dry, and I ran an additional electrical circuit for myself uh, over uh, to this wall over here because I always wanted an electrical outlet. Uh, right there. So now that all that is done, everything is dry, I can put the insulation back inside the wall cavity here and here so I can start buttoning up my drywall. Alright, so I'm installing the panels down here on the bottom level. These are the same panels that I took out. Now I labeled them when I took them out. So this one is right and this is facing up. So I know this panel goes in this cavity over here to the right. This panel over here is, is, is basically how everything is um, going to be installed when I, when I put in these other two panels. Um, what I've done is I'm using nails on the studs and I'm using screws that are um, hanging in the sides there. Let me show you what I mean by that. So as an example, on this stud, excuse me, on this wall opening right here, I've put in some blocking. I've got a bucket here next to me with a whole bunch of blocks just kind of like this size here. It's a few different sizes that I have here but they're basically just three quarter inch wood blocks and basically what I'm doing is I'm picking up the corners of the um, of the piece that I'm putting in here. So I'm going to be anchoring on the stud there and I'm going to be anchoring in with these nails here which is basically inch and a half uh, drywall ring shank nails and then I've got these screws here which are inch and one quarter inch drywall screws that I'm going to be screwing into 
the four corners so when the piece is in except over on this side over here because this stud is so close if the stud is close to the edge like it is here I'm not putting additional blocking here on the on the corners because this stud will be capturing that strength right there but I do have some blocking on this side and on this side so like I said this is what it's uh, going to uh, look like whenever when uh, before I get to the uh, the taping stage I still have to put in my seam tape um, the uh, drywall is all prepped I've taken a utility knife and I scored here all the way around the corners and I also scored here around all the corners where I'm putting in the drywall so I don't have any rough ragged edges this is on the inside of the drywall on this the finished side it's a smooth side so this is the prep work that I do in order to patch up my holes alright here's what everything looks like on the bottom before um, yeah everything's buttoned up on the bottom I've got my prep work done on the top so before I button up the top I'm just giving you one last look of what the inside of the wall cavity looks like okay here's what it looks like with everything in place and now I need to uh, start prepping to uh, get all my seams taped up I gotta do a little bit of sanding and scraping try to gain a little bit of access this whole closet is going to be painted from the top down so the ceiling looks terrible so I'm going to put stain stain blocking primer on basically everything <laughs> and then paint everything so I want to remove the safe and I want to uh, scrape down you can see the ceiling looks kind of weird in some spots and I also see some um, oh from the previous drywall there's just some imperfections I can as long as I'm into this I might as well just clean everything up try to make it look pretty all right, now that I've got the safe removed and uh, things were opened up a little bit here, I uh, pulled out some new tools. So now I've got all my drywall taping knives, which is this kit over here. But basically right now I'm going to be using a six-inch in, six taping knife, a five-in-one tool, and also uh, I've got some sandpaper over here so I can sand a few items. I have a pole sander with, um, uh, with an open mesh uh, disc here. So this way I can uh, just kind of start roughing up this surface and start scraping out all my high spots. So basically that's where I'm at right now. Just wanted to give you an update how I had to kind of, I'm switching gears now. I'm going from the mold uh, killing, drying out the wall project to now just a patch and paint project, which is now bringing out a different set of tools uh, to now move on with this the next process which is basically just patch and paint all right here's what the closet looks like so far I pulled out that transformer and taped over the holes so I don't have to worry about the um, doorbell and I've got everything all sanded and scraped down and I even wiped it down with a uh, with a damp sponge so that there's no drywall dust on anything so uh, right now I'm ready to um, start uh, putting the uh, tape on my seams but what I'm going to do before I do that because some of my gaps are a little large is I want to put down one coat of um, fast setting compound just just to fill in these gaps okay so this here is a fast set um, fast setting compound from uh, Westpac here and it's a uh, 90 minute light so it's going to take uh, I have 90 minutes or an hour and a half to work with it supposedly but I'm going to make up a bit when you, by the way when this stuff cures it cures out like raw card so for the first coat I don't mind using this but I would certainly not use this on the, on the uh, second and third coats the remaining coats are going to be this product same from the same company Westpac but this is all purpose joint compound this stuff is much easier to sand. This stuff here has a long working time and basically you have to let it dry overnight before you can touch it the next day. I'm working in a closet here so I'll try to do my best to give you a little bit of footage but the camera angle can't be the greatest because it's a very small work area. So I'm just kind of kind of giving it one coat just to give it a little something there with the 90 minute product. It's, like I said, this stuff cures out rock hard. So I don't want to do any sanding here. So I'm just filling it in. And I might as well get this stuff too. With a nice, a nice uh, section there like this.
Okay, here is the first coat. I have not put the mesh tape on. There's the mesh tape right there. I have not put that on yet. What I did was I put on one coat of the 90-minute um, uh, fast setting uh, compound. So that is on there now and this is what this stage of the project uh, looks like just so you can get a visual of exactly what everything looks like. Might be a little difficult to uh, tell on the uh, camera but um, it's not bad you know it's just the first coat and it, this stuff like I said cures rock hard so it's going to help prevent cracking and I don't even have the mesh tape on yet. Okay so it's the following day all of this is dried. I'm just going to take my six inch taping knife knock off all the high points then I'm going to take my um, uh, fiberglass mesh tape and I'm going to tape up my seams. You can see the seams here and so I am going to end up uh, doing the entire closet so the next time you see this shot it's it's going to have all the seam tape on. Okay as you can see I've got the yellow mesh tape on all the seams and now we can move forward with um, putting the uh, joint compound all over the um, seams for the first coat of that product so that's the next step. Alright, just got done putting on the all-purpose joint compound. Basically the two taping knives I used is the uh, the 6 inch uh, taping knife here and whatever that is, a 10 inch taping knife, 11 inch taping knife. So this is what the closet looks like now. Uh, I can't really give you video footage when I'm doing the actual job because it's just too tight in here because it's a closet. But basically I've given the uh, a very light coat. You can even see still some of the um, the yellow tape because it's so light in some sections. So a very light first coat. I didn't go heavy at all. Uh, all the way around. Um, this is what the uh, the rest of this looks like. So because this is a joint compound not the fast, fast set, I'm going to have to let this cure out for hours and hours and hours to dry out. I got the fan on it. I'm going to leave the fan on it right now and just uh, and let this dry out. Okay, it's the following day. All the joint compound is dry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock out all the high spots with a 6 inch taping knife. Then use a sanding block and a uh, pole sander just in order to uh, sand it down before giving it the uh, second coat. When the second coat goes on, things like this right here should should be gone where you don't see the uh, yellow anymore and, uh, and then we'll see how we look after the second coat. Here's the outside temperature 91. It's due to be uh, 104 degrees Fahrenheit today so we're in a little bit of a heat wave. Alright so what I ended up doing on this coat was I ended up just giving a skim coat over everything. The seam from the ceiling uh, down to the walls uh, everything. So, that, so you really shouldn't see any texture when I'm done. Uh, I might have to do another coat. Right now I'm just, uh, I got the mud on the wall. I have to just let it dry out. I got the fan over here. We're going to leave the fan on it all day. And then we'll uh, sand it down and we'll see where we stand at that point in time. We got our support staff over here helping us with this project. Okay, while we're waiting for the closet to dry out with the mud that's on the wall, I want to get this um, um, baseboard up right now. I don't feel the best tool to put this baseboard up is with my pneumatic finish nail gun, which I don't feel like pulling out because it's only one board, and uh, I have to pull out the air compressor, the air hose, the uh, gun, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to set it manually with uh, basic hand tools. So um, uh, here we go right now. Here's a close-up of that uh, baseboard that I just set in. Alright, so it's been overnight, so everything is dry. Now I've got to do the sanding. When you look at it like this, you really can't see the imperfections that well, but when you put the light uh, on the side like this, you can kind of see the imperfections that I'm trying to, to um, that I'm going to be sanding out. So here you can see on this wall all those imperfections. 
But when the closet is just used like uh, normal, you're not going to see this stuff because normally you're just going to be uh, back here. It's it's not. Uh, I didn't I didn't even put a light in the closet, so you don't even have any additional uh, light going on. And even if you did, you'd have to put it over here on the side to kind of see all the imperfections. And I'm going to sand out 95% of this right now, anyways. So just thought I'd show you before I I got to the uh, sanding. All right, here's what the closet looks like after a full hour of sanding. And I got it pretty good. It is not perfect. Actually, I can see some imperfection right here. I might fix that since I'm right here. Uh, but generally speaking, if you take the flashlight and you move it like this, this is where you're going to see your greatest imperfections. I'm trying to show you on the camera. You can see some imperfections right there. All right, so you know what, I'll QC this one more time, just since I'm right here and before I put the paint on it. I'll just, I mean, I'll uh, go over it one more time, but generally, I got it pretty good. Okay, here is the uh, completed uh, project for the closet. You can see that all the uh, walls are uh, finished, painted, and I uh, went and painted the baseboard white. They had it matching wall color before. Plus, I gave the um, closet uh, shelf and rod uh, a bright white, which is contrast to what they had. They had it all painted the same color as the wall and the ceiling. I gave that a nice bright, uh, bright white. So highly, you know, highly contrasting. So I think it looks a lot. It looks definitely looks a lot nicer. So uh, all the the walls are dry, and also the closet looks really nice. All right, we've got the moisture meter and zero, zero. Let's go down here. Zero. I'm actually getting a reading there. I have no idea why, but it's still in the green, but 31%. It should technically be zero. Uh, zeros across the board. Let's check up here. Check this wall and the insulation wall over here. Up here, I think I'm getting something before. Uh, we're fine. See that? Nice. No moisture behind the wall. So, so we so we're guaranteed that with uh, that binding up the walls was fine. No moisture. Okay, that is going to conclude this video. I hope that you enjoyed the video and you got some tips out of it. Uh, go ahead and smash that like button down for me and subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, and I will catch you on the flip side.